Hello! Alrighty, so let's just start off by um, giving you a little preface of where I got this inspiration from. I derived my inspiration from these three photos right here. So for the first photo, it is a skirt from IMG that cost a million dollars. I am not prepared to sell my kidney to the black market, but I do like the pleat width of this skirt. So I decided to incorporate that into the skirt that I'm about to create as well. So that's the first photo. The second photo, I like how it's high-waisted and the structure of the skirt, if that makes sense. So that's the second photo. And then for the third photo I liked the waist width of the skirt how it's much more wider than traditional pleated skirts and it gives you enough room to add like a black belt like a thick black belt and then with all skirts have some similar fashion is the Burberry pattern I love the Burberry pattern not so much the Burberry price I decided to make my own and then the fourth element that I decided to add that none of these skirts have quite frankly is that it is a wrap skirt you see if your weight is as inconsistent as the men in my life <laughs> then you quite frankly would benefit a lot from by you doing a wrap skirt. Because I see no point in really like creating a skirt that's so specific to your measurements as of right now and then just, just ending up changing measurements in the next month and then now the skirt doesn't fit you as quite right. But a wrap skirt keeps you snatched 24 seven. So cue the video. All right, starting off, I'm using a piece of fabric that's 16 inches long and 73 inches wide. To make my flat pleats, I have pinned three inches across, as you can see here. Each pin is roughly three inches away from the other. Now we sandwich the pins together. We just take the six and sandwich it on top of the three, then fold it straight across. Remove the pin that's under and repin it. Now we just repeat that step. So take the six and sandwich it on top of the three yet again, then pin them together. Here it is again for good measure. You can bring the right pin and put it on top of the left pin, then pin both in place. Make sure to fold it accordingly as well, like so. As you can see, I'm carefully folding the pleats since this is the most important part. Once all the pleats are folded, I measure the waistband making sure it is a lot longer than my actual waist measurement, which for me is about 27 inches. As you can see, I'm good to go since I have extra pleats left over that we will use later on for the wrapping process. Now we iron down the pleats. I'm using this setting, but you can honestly use whichever setting that best fits your fabric choice. Ironing it will make the pleats lay nice and crisp and will make the sewing process much easier and neater. Now we sew a line straight across the waist area. I'm using a straight stitch for this, but you can honestly use a zigzag stitch as well. Now this process is optional, but I'm just shimming out the pleats like so to create a more flare look to the skirt, which gives your body a more curvy shape, rather than having the pleats be straight down, which gives the body more of a structured boxy shape. So I do this by flaring out the pleats just a bit and then pinning it about 7 inches down, because that's where we'll sew down the pleats like so. I'm using a straight stitch here at the very edge of the fold, then making sure to reverse stitch a few times once I reach the end of it. You do the same to all the pleats, and mine looks something like this. As you can see, there's still a bit of flare to the bottom of the skirt, which is exactly what I was hoping for. Now for the waistband, I cut 10 inches long of fabric and about 32 inches wide. I'm marking for 3.5 inches and folding the waistband about 4 inches for an extra half an inch of seam allowance and I just pinned it straight across and then quickly ironed it flat. Now we insert the waistband onto the skirt. I already pinned where the waistband ends on the skirt, so all I do is put the skirt in between the fabric we just cut. I fold the ends a bit and pin it in place. Here it is again for good measure. I just pull, fold, and then pin, making sure I'm pinning it as straight as possible. Now that it is all pinned, I just tuck the rest of the fabric behind the skirt like so. Then I pin the very edge because that's where I'll be sewing too. Once all that is done, we just sew a line straight across, top and bottom. I'm using a straight stitch for this as well and stitching as close to the edge as possible. Once done, we move on to the top of the waistband and do the same. Again, sewing at the very edge. And this is how it came out. There's excess fabric, but you can always cut it off, but I kept mine for that extra layer of warmth. And here is my creation, ah uh, yes, very nice. Now, for the finishing touch, we are sewing the seams. For this, I always use the double roll method and then pin it all in place and sew using a zigzag stitch.
Now I cut off the excess fabric from the waistband and sew the side of the skirt using the double roll method again. I do this on both sides of the skirt and this is how it turned out. Now for this part, you gotta try on the skirt to see where the buttons are gonna go. I used orchid clips to mark where I'm putting the buttons on and I just added buttons on the edge of the skirt and also where the clips are like so. In this part, you really have full freedom to add as many buttons as you want. I had about two buttons on each flap for security and I love how the buttons are no show. So all you ever see is that little piece of thread used to hand sew these buttons on. After that, we are finally done. I am very much proud of making this skirt by scratch, a wrap skirt nonetheless. I made a two-tone denim one in this video, so I'm really happy to recreate it with this pretty Burberry-inspired pattern. I've been seeing this skirt everywhere and I thought it looked so cute with the knee high boots and thick black belt and I wasn't disappointed at the final product at all. I literally wore this skirt the same day that I finished it. I am seriously obsessed with it. All right, let me know what you think, please. And here are some final words from our number one sponsor. Hello, I just wanted to chime on in to say thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy the final product. Thank you so much yet again and I'll see you in my next video. Whoa. Thank you.